Well, hello, my friends. I have another little game for you for the month of February. And a little bit of a disclaimer before we start. This game is not easy to find, but I want to put it on your radar because if you ever do see it, either used or in a game store or maybe in a trade, pick it up. This is such a fun solo game. This is probably my go-to travel game. It's great for outside. It's great for airplanes. Um, it's you could play it, you know, a couple times in a row. It technically plays one to two, and it's equally fun. Every copy you get, though, you can increase the number of people. So if you have two copies, you can play between one and four people, which is kind of neat. It scales really, really well. It's very unique. It's a um, tile laying game, and you're trying to score the most points or, or beat your highest score type of a game. So I thought I would show it to you. I found this game, believe it or not, on this amazing uh, blog over at Board Game Geek. Uh, browsing the gaming world is what it's called and the author posts almost every day and his I love his gaming situation because he has a young I believe daughter so he plays some kid games with her he has a wife who likes to play games after work and at night so he plays some two-player games with her he also has a group of friends who go to a local game store I believe. I think he's in Brazil. He's somewhere cool as well so the pictures are awesome and he plays there with a big group of friends and then he also plays solo games. Talk about the ultimate gamer. I just admire him so much and this was a game that I always saw him playing when he took his daughter to a park or when he was catching a train. He would whip out limes or lime however you want however fancy you want to be and after watching him play it oh my goodness for probably a month straight I finally said okay I'm gonna find this game I'm gonna hunt it down I'm not sure where I got it from to be honest I think I picked it up on maybe Amazon or, or I, I don't remember but I did manage to find a copy of it and I thought I would do you the favor of showing it to you as well so the reason this game is so highly portable and lovely is, this is it, a little stack of tiles in one color red and a little stack of tiles in one color black, all right, and some meeples that match. And this is the whole game. So if we're gonna play solo, pick your poison, red or black. I'm feeling red today. So let's take out our red meeples and our red tiles. And this is our entire game. All you have to take with you, well, and you have to remember how to score, but that's not too hard. Um, so let me show you real quick how this quick, adorable, and fun little solo game works. So to start the game, we shuffle up our tiles. There's 16 in total, and we're going to be forming a 4x4 four four tile grid using all 16 of these. On your turn, you simply turn the first one over, and in a two-person game, you would announce the number. So I would say our first tile is 17. My opponent would pull tile 17, which is identical to this, right? And we would both then place it. Now, we're going to draw the same tiles, but we're going to place them uniquely. So we're going to end up, even though we're going in the same order, with two very different cities, right? Rules for placing are simple. I'm gonna just stick it here. Orientation doesn't matter. You can spin it any way you want. Pull the next tile, 18. Oh, nice shuffle job. And when I place my second tile, it must be orthogonally, all right? I can place it east, west, north, south. I cannot place it diagonally. And again, I can spin it any way I want. And it's the spinning that makes this game interesting. Because as you can see here, let me just pull one more. Uh, is that everything? I think that is. Yep, I have all the things shown here. There are three different land types available to you. You have your fields, you have your water, lakes, oceans, whatever you want to call it, um, uh, forest, and stone. I guess oh, that's not three, is it? It's four. Counting is difficult this morning. And you also have two types of buildings, fishermen huts, that are these little blue things, roofs, and watchtowers, which are these kind of uh, orangey brown. And those are the four th icons, colors, whatever you want to call it, that you're going to see on all these cards. 
And this is where your meeples come in because your meeples are unemployed, undecided little college students who don't know what they want to do with their lives. And you get to assign them to work the land, all right? So if I set a meeple, for instance, on the forest, kaboom, he becomes a forester and he is going to walk around and harvest forest products for me and score me points. Likewise, I can stick a meeple on water and he becomes a fisherman. I guess I'll do them face down because that looks a little better. Fields makes him a farmer. And if I stick him on um, a rock with a tower, he becomes a watchman. So these are the four things that they can do. Um, fisherman huts are, you don't actually put somebody there really. It's just for points later. You can have more meeples on one tile, no worries, but what you can't do is have multiple meeples in the same zone. So I can't stuff two farmers there. All right. You're also allowed to move your meeples and they have to move also um, orthogonally so they can't move diagonally. But I can decide, mm, you know what, I don't want him to be a forest. I'd rather have him be a farmer so you can move them around. Notice though, I have less meeples than I do tiles. 16 tiles and only seven meeples. So I have to be a little bit careful where I put my little undeclared college majors here. Um, and I wanna make sure I'm getting the most points possible for them. Okay, so let me set up a little bigger grid and show you how points work. So the easiest one to figure out is your farmer. And the way the farmer works is you place him on your field and he's gonna score a point for every field that is connected. So right now he would only score two points. If, however, I was to place my tiles this way, he would be scoring one, two, three, four points. So that one little farmer would score all four points. Farmers, it turns out, are kind of competitive little fellows. So what I can't do is put a meeple here and score my four points twice. All right? I get one territory is taken up by one little farmer person and you can't double them up. Farmers are easy. Fishermen, fishermen score, remember we put him in the water, and he scores points for every fisherman hut adjacent to his territory. So for example, in this one, I would have one, two, three, four, all five of these water squares would be eligible. And I have a fisherman huts here, one, two, three, four, five, six. Hey, that's pretty good, and I don't see any way to make that better. Um, if I was to spin this guy, nope, there's no way to get that hut in. Um, is there anything else I could spin? I don't think so. That one just worked out rather well. So he would score all of these huts. So this little guy, one, two, three, four, five, six, would give me six points. I guess I can leave him on. One, two, three, four. All right, we're doing good. We're doing good here. Okay, my forest people are a little bit trickier. So let's say I'm gonna go with this forest block here. And I put my little undeclared college dude right there and he becomes a forester. And he is going to score, remember, fields score every field in a row. The way forests score is you look at your forest territory, which would be these two blocks, and you're gonna score one point for every mm, square that's adjacent, not a diagonal. So in this case, we would score three points. One, two, three, all right? We're not scoring the number of forests. How would we score more? Uh, well, let's see. What if we had done, just for an, an example here, let's put a forest here, doo, doo, doo. and let's put one up here. Oh, wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is gonna be a great forest territory. Okay, so now we're looking huge. This forest guy is gonna be taking on a bunch of territory because now the connected forests are here, 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 and here. No diagonal connections, all right? So this is our forest territory and every square adjacent to this is going to score him. So we're gonna score one down below. I don't have anything up top, so it's just gonna be one, two, three, four, five. This guy is six, seven, eight, nine. Wow, so that would be nine 
point, sorry. So you want to get your forests in the middle. If they're on the edge, for instance, if I stick him here, he's only going to score me three points, right? But if I put him in the middle, boom, and let's say this wasn't a forest like this, this guy would score me four. One, two, three, four, okay? So forests are, mm, they're kind of like, they're kind of like farms, but a little bit different. You want them all connected, but you're scoring around the connected piece, not the connection itself. All right. So that's your forester. And the last one, of course, is our woodcutter. Sorry, not woodcutter, watchman. And those are these towers. And the watchmen are very interesting because you think of them, they're going to be up high and they're going to be watching. And so let's find a good one. Let's put him... Um, I don't have a good one here right now. Let's stick them on this watchtower, for example. And they're going to get one victory point for every forest that they can see horizontally or vertically that isn't blocked by another watchtower. So this guy is going to look up and down and see no forests. He's going to look this way and he's going to see two forests. So he's only going to score two points. If, for example, we had stuck him here, oh, that probably would have been better, he would see one, two, three forests this way. This way, he doesn't see any. But remember, watchtowers are blocked by other watchtowers. So, if for some reason I had laid my tiles like so, this watchtower would see, wouldn't be blocked by this, so it would not see in this direction at all. He would only be able to see this way, so he wouldn't score us any points. Yeah, I know. So it's a lot to think about. Um, it's a lot of when you're laying tiles, trying to figure out, all right, so if I'm starting here, do I want to build off of my forest and get that going? Or do I want to build here and get a fishing hut and maybe make this sea? Or I've got two lands. Maybe I want to keep my lands free. So I want to start here. All right. So on your turn, you pull a card and you lay it. At that point, you may, you don't have to, place a meeple, or you may move a meeple. Again, you don't have to. Our little undeclared men and women, um, they don't have to come into the game right away. You can only do one around, right? So uh, if you have all seven of them and, you, and you're on your last turn, you're kind of out of luck because you're only going to be able to place one. So you do want to get these on the board relatively quickly, but there's no rush. So you, you could pull a couple of tiles and kind of develop your landscape before you start assigning majors to our little undeclared college men. All right, is that a little bit clear perhaps? Let's just play a game. Easiest way to see a game is to play it. I usually sit and ruminate over all of my choices to get the most points available. I'm probably gonna play a little bit fast and loose here just to, you know, keep the pace up as it were. Um, but let's just start, shall we? Tile one, doesn't really matter. Uh, once it's laid, you can't rotate it, right? But what the heck, we'll just put it number correct, number nine. And let's see who's coming up next. Okay, so here's our first thing. Watchtowers, remember, block each other. So I really, if possible, would not want to put those. So no matter what I do, I'm going to block watchtowers. So we're not going to worry about that. Um, I would like to get my forests together and, if possible, my fishing posts together. So that would help for forests, but that locks him for fish. Is there, I can't do it, you can't do it diagonally, right? You can't do something funny like this. They have to be flush. So it looks like this is gonna be my only choice, which is kind of a bummer. Not the best of start, so I don't wanna place anybody because I don't feel confident quite yet. All right, forests, ooh, double fishing hut. So ooh, if I could get that on water, that would be great. So if I get him on water and keep him, hmm. So if I do this, hmm, that gets locked. If I do this, hmm, hmm, here we go, here we go, here it is, here's the money, all right? So I'm growing right here in my forest area, which is great. I have one blue tile that has a double fishing hut, all right? 
I've also got some nice line of sight going here with this watchtower, and I have some nice line of sight going here with this watchtower. Remember, we want our forests to be kind of enclosed at all times. So I'm feeling pretty confident that this is going to be a fisherman. So guess what? You've just declared your major. You are going into the fishing industry. And I'm gonna commit my maple here, okay? All right, ooh, this is lovely, okay. Let's do, let's do this. So if I, I want very badly to connect water here. Now, I guess you could, if as you play the game, you're gonna get better at it. And you're gonna realize the um, spread of the cards. There aren't a lot of cards that have double of the same. There's only a certain number of these. And once you start to play, you can kind of get into a card counting. You can kind of add that into your strategy and say, okay, I know there's only two of these. One's coming out, one's still in here. If I try and rely on this, am I jamming myself up later on? All right. So another little tip that as you play, you're going to get used to the layout of these cards, which makes the game even crunchier and meatier, which is really cool. So knowing that, um, would I want to maybe do something different? Like, mm, that's interesting, because that expands my farmland. I'm still waiting on that double water, which honestly, I'm going to tell you, is a bad life choice. So, <laughs> uh, gosh darn it. What do we do here? Where do we stick this guy that makes the most sense. Hmm. All right, let's do it. Let's just be greedy. So if I do that, and if I pull a double water, which I'm probably not, nah, 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 I don't want to do that. I want to commit to this fisherman. Let's do this. Let's do this. All right. Okay. So see, this is what I'm talking about here. So this guy can go here, right? I end up with another fishing hat. So I have a really nice uh, little stream going on here. Um, the problem is this also has some very delicious forestry on it. I think if possible, I would like to wait for my double forest card, but I'm feeling pretty confident here that I'm gonna need a forester. So declare your major, go forth and cut wood. Let's do this. Remember I have a four by four grid, so I'm kind of I'm getting to the end of what I can do here. Okay. So this one's kind of junk. Um, is there a way to capture this fisherman's hut? And so I want to save that for forest. So where's my farmland? I feel like this, this may, might be my farmland. All right. Because again, this continues my fisherman's journey. It picks up a hut. It starts a farmland. All right, but that kind of defines my borders of, because I'm now at three by three. You can see I've hit my four this way. I need to start building that way. Farmland and watchtowers. Watchtowers I want near forests, so I have I have a double forest here, and um, hmm. I have a watchtower here. I've got my farmland, so this is kind of a junky little card. Um, I don't want to put it up here, right? Let's see. What about this region? Anything exciting over here? Where do I not have a watchtower? Don't have one here. Kind of just cuts me off. Um, yeah, I'm not, I definitely have not planned well for this particular tile. Ooh, what if I just do this? Okay. Eh, not the best placement, but at least I get another fisherman's hut. We'll, we'll call that what it is. Oh, here we go. Green, green, green. So, green could go up here. That would finish my forestry area. How do I feel about that? Hmm, hmm, that's kind of a small forest area to be honest, but that's a corner up here and so I'm, I, I kind of goofed by making this so small. I wish I hadn't put these here, but I did. OK, 
okay, let's do that. Let's do that and let's start building down here. All right. So what do we want to build next? I would love to get another forestry area going, to be honest with you. Maybe something like this. Any good farmland or water hookups I could do? Something like this. And then maybe wait for a double forest card here. I got a tiny bit of farmland. So I might, I'm just gonna reserve a meeple and put it over he up here to remind myself it's not a lot of, of points, it's only one, two, three, but it's, it's a possibility for some time later. Um, hmm. Hmm. I need, I need a good forest chunk here and I'm not seeing it. Okay. Mm, 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 let's do this. Let's do this. Okay. Okay, okay, we have a little more water, but that's a tiny little lake, which isn't too exciting. That's a tiny little forest, which again, isn't too exciting. That's a tiny little forest. Man, I'm having no luck here. Um, hmm. I really want to build off of this forest in particular because it's right in the middle and I can get a very large... So let's do this and hope we can find something good for here. Oh, uh, that's not it. All right, we could start another fishery down here because that's three. So I need to put a water here. Here it is, big money. This is what I was hoping for. Ah, but it's double water. Shoot, because I kind of want to put him down here. Oh, but I need to build the forest. I need to build the forest. So let's do this. And I could continue the forest this way, or if I go here, I can continue the forest down here. So let's. Mmm. Mmm. Let's think here. All right. So, ah, oh, see, I lost track, track of my meeples. One, two, three, four. So I have four more turns. So I got to start getting my meeples down. Gosh darn it. I got so excited by the tiles, I forgot about the meeples. So let's commit a meeple to the forest section here. Okay, okay, okay. Not great. Better. And then let's make a fisherman. Oh, but I wanted my fisherman over here. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Oh, and I gotta do my watchtowers too. Okay, let's figure out watchtowers really fast. So this is a great row right here. So we definitely want a watchtower there. Um, four, oh, I was hoping for a water. I didn't get one. All right, let's hedge our bet. So let's hedge, let's hedge. Um, let's do this and we will Let's hedge on the water here, uh, unless there's a better tower. Do you guys see a better tower? So this tower is going to take this row, and it's not blocked by anything, and this row, and it's not blocked by anything. This guy gets blocked here and here. This could get me a few. That's a block. That's a block. Oh, I did not play this well. Um... Um, oh, what about this one? And, and maybe here? What would that get me? One, two? No, nah, that's only two. <sighs> no luck, no luck. All right, I guess we're going to go for fishermen then. That's just two points. Okay. Whoops, well, I knew I wanted to put a farmer there. Let's do that for now. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Um, so... I could either, I could put him here, which would score me one, two, three, four, five. Hey, that's not bad. Boom. And my last one I'm going to put here. And I can either make him a fisherman, which isn't bad. That's only one, two, three. Or I can make him a forest dude, which actually might be better. So let's make him a forest dude. 
Okay. Whew. Whew. Kind of forgot about my meeples there. I was so busy trying to get all these cards right. Okay. As you can see, you could spend a lot of time spinning cards and trying to figure out advanced placements, or you could do what I did and kind of speed run it. Uh, but let's find out how, how we scored. And the easiest way to do that is to sort of take them off by type. So the farm is the easiest, right? This guy scored us three. One, two, three. All right. The next guys let's do, let's do our fishermen. We had a lot of people who went into the fishing major, which is kind of surprising. So let's do this little guy. He fished one, two, three, four, five, six. Did I get that right? Wow, that's a lot. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. 7 plus 3 is 10. Remember that for me. We're at 10. All right, who was my other fisherman? No, 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 no. This guy was my other fisherman. And he picked up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Wow, the fishing industry is booming. We're at 15. Um, let's do forests next. So this little forest is going to get us 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8. All right. Oh, uh, what was I at? Oh, shoot. 15? Was I at 15? I think I was, right? 15 plus 8 is 23? Uh, I should be writing these down. All right, let's go with 23. 23. My next forest is this guy. And he had a four. Ooh, he's big. All right. 23. Let's count. Uh, 24, 25, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33. Did I count him? Counting is the hardest part of this game. 25, or I'll put my finger. 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. All right, let's just say 35. And this little forest dude, my finger here, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43. Not bad. And I only placed one watchtower, but that's all right. 43, uh, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. Possibly 50 points. There might be some dodgy counting that went on there, but that's all right. <laughs> this is, we play it fast and loose. And then there's a little a score table here. A score of 49 or more points is excellent. So I did that excellently. Wow, really? That's one of my best scores, and I played it so fast. Maybe I overthink things. Hmm. Um, and then there are some variants that you can do as well if you want to jazz things up. But oh, I don't know why I love this game so much, but I do. I really, really do. I love the thinky nature of it. I think it's so pretty. Um, it, it's all it, it's a it's a neat looking game. Everything is very orderly. Uh, you can really think hard, or you can just kind of breeze through it and have a good time. Plays just as beautifully with two people, and it's independent play, right? So all you're doing is calling out these tile numbers when you pull them, and the person next to you is building their own little city. And at the end of the game, you look up, and even though you've used the exact same tiles. You don't even recognize what the other person has done. You're like, what? That's what you made? Totally different from mine. All right. Um, like I said, you can sort of start to remember how many double tiles there are, but you don't use all of them, right? You only use 16, so you're not all of them go into play. But you can kind of get an idea of what your odds are of pulling a double if that's what you're waiting for. You'll also notice that some things score you more. Farming is the lowest scoring, and I think it's forests we decided are the highest scoring. Anyway, um, you, you start to get an idea of what to prioritize when you're building your little domain here. Such a fun game. I just want to, in fact, I could just sit, I might sit here and play another game. Um, re, the replayability of this is pretty much unlimited because as soon as I pick all of these up, I could replay with this exact 16 cards and have as much fun. But all you need to do is just give it a quick little shuffle, mix them up a little bit, pull your first card, and let's play again, right? Oh, uh, how much fun is that? So much fun. I hope you guys can find this. I always feel bad doing games that are harder to find because uh, I know how frustrating it is to see a game that sounds good and then be like, but I can't get it. 
keep your eyes open for this one. I don't know. I don't know what the availability is, but it's one that if you see it, grab it. Go check out the blog. Um, what did I say it was? Browsing the Gaming World? I'll try and link it below. He is so cool. I've discovered so many fun games um, through him. And I just, I love the way he writes. Uh, so if you're interested and you can get your hands on it, pick up limes, lime, however fancy you want to be. Um, fun, fun solo game. Won't regret it. All right, guys, I know I've been into like little quick games lately. Maybe I'll, I'll be in the mood for something a little bit longer and heavier. But for now, enjoy.